All right, we got that taken care of. Um, we are calling the case of Street versus Taylor. Are the parties present and ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Any housekeeping that we need to take up? Yes, Your Honor. Before we begin, the plaintiff does have a few housekeeping matters. Uh, Your Honor, seeing as this is a new style that we're trying cases here on Zoom, I anticipate we'll obviously be having objections. Given the layout of my room, I know opposing counsel's room, is it okay if Your Honor allows us to make objections while sitting down during someone's direct examination to make sure we're close enough to the mic and not to cause distraction? Yes, that'll be okay. Additionally, Your Honor, I anticipate that there may or may not be some impeachments going on in today's trial. While I understand that during a normal bench trial, Your Honor might not see a document that's used to be impeached, during this course of this Zoom call, Your Honor, and this Zoom trial, is it okay that for impeachment purposes, we use the screen share function so everyone knows where exactly we're at in the proposed document? Yes, you may. Uh, just so Your Honor is aware, there are a few pre-admitted documents and pre-admitted exhibits that me and opposing counsel have agreed upon prior to today's trial. I'm sure Your Honor has that pre-trial order, a jury instruction, um, just making Your Honor aware of that to begin with. Yes, sir. I have a copy of the pretrial order and um, we'll, we'll take up any problems that come up as we go. Awesome, Your Honor. And the last thing is that during my opening statement, I will be using a picture of Rory Street that we do anticipate will be admitted during the course of trial. Uh, opposing counsel, do you have any objection to that? No objection, Your Honor. Very well. And with that, Your Honor, I have no further housekeeping matters. I do have some motions to eliminate, but if opposing counsel has some housekeeping matters and like to address those first, more than happy to do that. Let's take up the defense opposing uh, defense housekeeping matters, and then we'll take up motions and eliminate separately. Absolutely. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Your Honor, we have no housekeeping matters. I would just like to formally make my appearance. My name is Ashley Fitzpatrick, and I am here on behalf of the defendant, Coach Reese Taylor. And with me, I have Carolyn McGuigan, my second seat. Very well. Thank you, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Um, one housekeeping matter from the judge. I'll be keeping time and I will give you um, time updates at the end of the plaintiff's closing chief and then at the end of the defense closing chief before closing arguments. We're going to try to get through things as quickly as possible. So a minimum amount of breaks. Um, Y'all are welcome to grab a drink of water while I'm doing the math. Hopefully it won't take me too long. And then we'll try to keep things moving here. Any questions from the parties? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Then we will take up plaintiff's motions in limine. Your Honor, I just have one motion in limine. The first, that motion in limine being that we have a good faith basis to believe that opposing counsel will be using an exhibit, that being a note that opposing counsel believes was written by Rory Street. Your Honor, we don't believe that opposing counsel is going to be able to lay the proper authentication for that document. And we do believe that document is hearsay, Your Honor. And so we'd like that document not to be referred to in any statements and to be excluded from the game. Response? Your Honor, we do not seek to admit this document uh, at trial today. Very well, then we will grant your motion in limine. And what exhibit is this? Your Honor, this is exhibit 11. Oh, pardon me, you wanted you wanted a motion to exclude, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And you have no objection to a motion to exclude? No, Your Honor. And that's, that's exhibit, exhibit 12, Your Honor, just for clarification. Very well. Um, I will grant your motion to exclude. And with that, Your Honor, the plaintiff has nothing further. Very well. Anything from the defense? Uh, yes, Your Honor. The defense seeks to exclude any evidence of a prior incident by Coach Taylor that hope happened over six years ago when he was a coach for a different school unrelated to this case. By way of background, this is a case about the deceased here who died after making a choice to take cocaine before soccer practice. We move to exclude any testimony about this prior incident um, pursuant to Federal Rule of Evidence 404, um, as it would be propensity evidence, Your Honor. Your Honor, we don't anticipate on going to the prior bad acts of Coach Taylor today. Very well. Then I will grant this um, motion as well in regard to the prior bad acts of Coach Taylor at his former um, place of employment. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, um, we also had a conversation with opposing counsel prior to trial, and we've agreed that um, any subsequent remedial measures that the defendant may have taken uh, will not be uh, entered into evidence at trial today. And that was the subject of a se our second motion in limine, which we not do, not, do not need to make at this time. Very well. Is that the, that the case as well, Mr. 
You've lost your name. Okolo is my last name. <laughs> yes. Your Honor, that is our understanding pursuant to Rule 407. We understand that subsequent remedial measures are not allowed. However, in certain cases, if it becomes important, we do intend on going into those subsequent remedial measures per Rule 407. Very well. Anything else from the parties? Nothing from the defense, Your Honor. All right, then we will proceed to opening statements. Mr. Okolo? Kalo? May it please court and opposing counsel. The defendant knew there was something different about Rory Street at soccer practice on September 7th, 2018. The defendant's best athlete they had ever coached suddenly couldn't do anything when temperatures started to increase and reach 105 degrees. Rory's skin was pale, lifeless. She was breathing heavy, gasping for air, hands on her hips. She could not breathe. Instead of asking her if she was okay, if she needed water, if she needed a break, the defendant pushed and pushed and literally ran Rory to death. Good afternoon. Once again, my name is Emo Kyle Cole, and today I have the privilege of representing Miss Jordan Street, the mother of Rory. Before I tell you about how this defendant prided winning and trophies over the health and the well being of students, I gotta tell you about Rory. You see, Rory loved soccer. Rory was a soccer prodigy. You're going to learn that Rory started playing soccer at the age of four. As soon as that ball touched her feet, everyone knew that Rory had a gift, a talent. She was going to be a star athlete. So growing up, she began to develop those skills. She joined Premier League. She started being coached by some of the best of the best, her parents were investing in her. She was gonna to go to college, have a D1 scholarship and succeed. But today you're gonna to learn that that was all taken away. It was taken away because the coach prided those trophies, that winning over the health and the well-being of Rory. Now, to understand why the defendant's actions on September 7th of 2018 were so wrong, you need to understand something about the responsibilities of coaching high school sports right here in Texas. Now, if you know a little bit about high school sports, you know here in Texas, it can get pretty competitive, especially when it comes to soccer. Now, the coaches, they're in what we would call maybe a youth, right? The coaches get together, they talk about best practices, they make sure that they're going to be looking out for the students. They do this because they're dealing with high schoolers. High schoolers who sometimes may not have even their own best interests at heart. High schoolers who wanna push themselves and push themselves and push themselves to the limit, but don't know really what those limits are. Those coaches, they understand that they're supposed to be the adults in the room, the defendant, is supposed to be looking out for their players' well-being. So that's why they meet. They meet to discuss best practices. They understand that Texas, well, we have some complications. While we love it here in Waco, we understand it can get hot. It's not unusual for temperatures to reach above 100 degrees, but we got to take precautions. One of those precautions you're going to learn is that soccer games usually aren't played in the early afternoon. They usually play at night to allow the sun go down and at least a little bit of heat to subside. Because students can suffer from heat stroke. You're gonna learn through expert testimony today that heat stroke can come in various forms. There's a lot of signs to show. Heavy breathing, profusely sweating, seizing, you're going to learn that all these signs Rory showed. But you're going to learn that the defendant didn't care. That the defendant 
didn't do what a reasonable person would have done in this situation. Now, this all started on September 7th of 2018. Now, this was a normal day here in Waco. As the afternoon began to come and go, well, the heat began to rise and rise and rise. You're going to learn that the defendant intentionally had practice in early afternoon. You're going to learn the defendant did this not to make sure their team was in the best shape possible, but to condition them, to toughen them up. You're going to learn that the defendant thought if they can play in the extreme heat, that they would be tough, regardless of the consequences. So as the heat came, you're going to learn that, well, players were affected. The defendant is going to tell you that Rory had a special relationship on the team, that Rory was the star athlete. Rory was that student that was pushing themselves time and time again. Rory was the leader on the team. She was out there willing to put her body and herself on the line for her teammates. She understood hard work. She understood teamwork, focus, drop. But like many high schoolers, well, Rory didn't always know her limits. That's why you're going to learn the coaches there to make sure that they're looking out for the safety and the well-being of students, as well as an athletic trainer. Now, on September 7th of 2018, you're going to hear the defendant knew there was something different about Rory. This star athlete, someone who's always scoring that winning goal, she came to practice and she couldn't make passes. She wasn't dribbling the ball correctly. She was missing wide open shots. Something was different. Something was off. But instead of asking if Rory was okay, if she needed some water, if she needed some shade, if she needed a break, if the heat was getting to her, she wanted to punish her. The defendant wanted to make a statement. The defendant had her do what we call Burma Road here in Waco. During Burma Road, Rory had to run 30 yards, dribble 30 yards, take a shot, and then bear crawl back another 60 yards over and over and over again until the defendant told her to stop. You're going to hear from Aubrey, one of Rory's good friends. Aubrey was running that Burma Road with Rory on September 2nd. You're going to hear that Rory did not feel well. That Rory was exhausted, tired, heavy breathing. Her skin was pale. Her skin was red. She was so out of the ordinary. And you'll learn the coach was standing right there doing nothing about it. But even, even when the coach saw that Rory was struggling through those Burma roads, she still couldn't get enough. The defendant decided to punish her even more, instituting this new slide tackling drill. Had all the teammates line up and one after the other go and run at Rory and slide tackle until she fell, got back up, fell, got back up, fell, got back up. You'll learn it happened 15 times. And on that 15th time, with the sun beating down, hitting 105 degrees, Rory sweaty, Tired, exhausted, she collapsed. She seized. And Rory died. Your Honor, at the end of today's trial, it's going to be clear. We're only here because of the defendant's actions, the defendant's coaching tactics, the defendant not doing what a reasonable person would have done. It's going to be clear. Had the defendant just asked if Rory was okay, just waited 30 seconds to make sure her player's well-being was met, we wouldn't be here today. It's for these reasons that at the end of today's trial, Your Honor, we're going to ask that you hold this defendant responsible. Fitzpatrick, would you like to give your opening statement? Yes, Your Honor, a moment to set up. Mm -hmm. 
May I proceed, Your Honor? May. What happened to Rory Street is a tragedy and no one today will dispute that. And our hearts truly go out to the Street family. But we're here today to decide who was at fault for this death. And the evidence will show that my client, Coach Reese Taylor, was not responsible for the death of Rory Street. Instead, Ms. Street made a series of choices that led to her death. She made a choice to take cocaine before practice, something that opposing counsel didn't even mention on his opening. Ms. Street made a choice to tell no one about that consumption of cocaine, not her teammates, not her trainer, and certainly not her coach, Coach Taylor. It was Ms. Street's action and then inaction that ultimately led to her death. Now, while my client had a duty to protect the health and safety of players on his soccer field, she isn't a mind reader and she cannot be expected to assume that her players are on drugs when they come to practice. Now, we understand that the plaintiff's desire to hold someone accountable for the loss of their daughter. But the truth is, Your Honor, cocaine kills and cocaine killed Miss Street on September 7th 2018. Now you're gonna hear from Coach Taylor today. This is a woman who has dedicated her life to coaching and mentoring young soccer players just like Miss Street. Now Coach Taylor is a successful coach. And yes, her team wins and that is important to her. Now she'll also tell you today that success only comes with hard work. So she pushes her players to meet their full potential. And you'll hear on direct that she doesn't shy away from this. Now, Your Honor, you don't have to like Ms. Taylor's methods that she uses on her soccer field, but we trust Your Honor will be able to put emotions aside and find that her actions were not a proximate cause of Ms. Street's death. Now, you'll learn today that Coach Taylor believes in discipline and accountability, but most of all, she values her players' health and their safety over everything else more than the game itself, and more than any win. You'll hear that on September 7th, 2018, Miss Street was at a soccer practice along with her other teammates. And yes, it was a hot day, but so were most September days in Texas. This day, however, opposing counsel is right. Something was off with Miss Street. Now, not knowing about Miss Street's drug use, my client saw a star player that wasn't playing to her full potential. So she did what she always did. She held the player accountable by making her practice drills. Now, first my client had Miss Street run Burma Road, which as you'll learn is a decades old Waco High tradition meant to discipline and to motivate its soccer players. Now, when Coach Taylor saw that failed to motivate Miss Street, she tried a new drill involving slide tackling. Now slide tackling is a common occurrence in soccer games and it involves tackling the player with the ball. Now this drill wasn't easy by any means, but that's the point of these soccer drills during soccer practice. They're designed to make players better. But what Coach Taylor didn't know, that's something that was off. The key information you'll learn would have changed every decision that she made that day was that her player, Rory Street, had taken cocaine before practice. Now the evidence today will show that Rory Street died of a heart attack caused by the cocaine that was found in her system when she died. Now you're gonna hear from an expert witness, Spencer London today. He's an expert in toxicology and he will confirm that Miss Street's decision to use cocaine is what killed her on September 7th. That cocaine that she ingested damaged her heart and it made her more susceptible to heat exhaustion and a heat stroke, which resulted in her collapsing on the soccer field during a regular practice. Ms. London will also explain to you that cocaine causes heart swelling, which makes it harder for the heart to pump blood around your body and beat regularly, which Ms. Street's autopsy will confirm today. 
Ms. London will also explain how cocaine inhibits the body's ability to cool itself down, which may, may, means someone like Miss Street more prone to heat exhaustion because she was using cocaine. Your Honor, you will learn that my client was not aware of Miss Street's cocaine use. If she had been, we wouldn't be here today. Because if Ms. Street has said a single word about ingesting cocaine before practice, my client would never have allowed her on the field that day. Now you'll learn today that Ms. Street wasn't feeling well during practice, and she made a choice to keep that information to herself. Ms. Street chose to power through soccer practice that day instead. She chose not to ask for a break from Coach Taylor. She chose not to take her own water break, which she would have been allowed to do if she had just asked. She also didn't tell any adult at soccer practice that day that she had chest pains and that she was feeling unwell. Things that neither my client nor the trainers on the field, the people who were there to ensure the health and safety of players knew about. They couldn't guess these things. Ms. Street could have said something, but she didn't. And unfortunately, this inaction caused Ms. Street's death. It's tragic, it is, but it's the truth. Coach Taylor's decisions didn't cause Rory's death. Rory's own choices did, her actions, and then her inactions did. Now, Your Honor, we don't know why she chose to take cocaine before practice, but she did. And simply put, that cocaine killed her. As such, at the end of this trial, I will ask Your Honor to return the only verdict consistent with justice and with the evidence in this case. To find my client, Coach Taylor, not liable for the death of Rory Smith. Thank you. Uh, plaintiff, would you like to call your first witness? Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiff would like to call by way of deposition, Jordan Street. I'm just going to ask my second chair, Drew, to hop on screen for me. We're just going to read the portions of the deposition, Your Honor. Very well. Proceed when y'all are ready. Thank you. Starting on page two, line six, for opposing counsel's reference. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. My name is Jordan Street. Where are you from? I live in Waco and have all my life. Do you have any children? I did. My daughter, Rory. I'm showing you what's been marked for identification purposes as Exhibit 3. Do you recognize this? Yes, this is the photograph of Rory. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to offer Exhibit 3 into evidence. Any objections? No objection, Your Honor. Exhibit 3 is admitted. Starting page two, line 23. What happened to Rory? She died at soccer practice on September 7th, 2018. Was Rory in high school? Yes. Where did she go to school? Rory went to Waco High, just like me. Did Rory participate in any sports? Yeah, she played uh, varsity soccer for school. She played soccer for a private traveling club uh, team on the weekends. To be honest, this kid's life was pretty much soccer 24 seven. Getting her to read a book was the hard part. When did Rory start playing soccer? Oh gosh, when, when she was little, four or five years old, I went and signed her up to, uh, just so she can get started being out and being athletic and being around other kids. But she took right to it and never looked back. Before you knew it, we were spending weekends driving all over Texas to soccer tournaments, and the next 12 or so years were just kind of a blur. Soccer tournaments, soccer practices, soccer camps, soccer everything. Page six, line 10. Was Rory a troubled kid? No, Rory was a good kid. Did she use drugs? Absolutely not. If I had suspected that or even seen evidence of that, uh, there would have been some serious consequences. Whenever Rory acted up in the past, even just threats of grounding and chores around the house proved to be effective deterrence. I have no idea. Objection. Why Your Honor. 
We object to the remainder of this answer from line 16. I have no idea why that text showed that, but it can't be accurate. Um, opposing uh, counsel has stipulated the authenticity of the toxicology and the autopsy report. And therefore this witness um, expressing his opinion about the authenticity of this test um, should not be heard by the court today. Response. Your Honor, the authenticity only means that the document is what it purports to be, that it is a toxicology report and that it came from the medical examiner's office here in Waco. It doesn't mean that the document itself is accurate and that the information is truthful. This witness is just offering a lay opinion as to their belief of whether or not their own daughter used drugs. They would certainly know that. Your objections are ruled. Page six, line 12. Did she use drugs? You want me to read the full answer again? Yes, please. Absolutely not. If I had suspected that or even seen any evidence of that, there would have been serious consequences. Whenever Rory acted up in the past, even just threats of grounding or chores around the house proved to be effective deterrence. I have no idea why the test showed that, but it couldn't be accurate. Page seven, line 13. You told us earlier that you lived in Waco your entire life. Did you go to Waco High? Yes, I did. I would, I'm a lion through and through. When you were at Waco High, did you play any sports? Uh, I played soccer, just like Rory, uh, but we won a state championship while I was there. When you were playing soccer at Waco High, did you ever have to run Burma Road? Hell yeah, we did. I remember doing that when we were dogging it or if we weren't in the correct position or something. A coach would send us off to run the Burma Road. But I'll tell you this. None of my coaches ever made me or any other kid keep going when it was obvious that we were exhausted. Discipline is one thing, but that's just dangerous. Page eight, line three. Do you know what a slide tackle is? Sure. Are slide tackles a part of the game of soccer? Of course they are. Turn, any, uh, turn on any game and you're going to see players at every level performing slide tackles. That's part of the deal. Are slide tackles violent? Uh, they can be. I mean, it's soccer, so a lot of injuries are pretend acting, but anytime you're running full speed and you slide feet first at another player's legs, that could be a dangerous situation. Is it important to teach slide tackling as a coach? Yes, it is, but that isn't what happened here. This wasn't a drill to teach Rory how to slide tackle or defend against them. Rory knew how to slide tackle, and I and, and knew how to avoid them. This was about punishment. Coach Taylor lost her temper and went off. It went too far. That drill wasn't necessary. In all the time that I've played, coached, and watched soccer, I've never seen a drill like that. Not once. Thank you. We have no further read-ins from this witness, Your Honor. Your Honor, the defense has some counter designations for this read-in um, of the witness testimony. Would you prefer we do it now or in our case in chief? We'll go ahead and do it now. You can may I have my um, second seat assist me? You may. Directing court and counsel to page five, line 12. Question, did you push Rory to be an athlete? I don't know if I would use the word push. I encourage Rory to work hard at sports and at everything else in her life. I taught Rory to never show weakness and to never complain. I wanted her to be tough, to play through the pain, because that's what makes a champion. Rory was tough because I made her tough. Moving to page, Moving six, to page six, line four. Line four. Question, did you have to stay on top of Rory to, to, make top sure, of to make sure she was practicing? Make sure she was practicing. Not any more than any other parent of a teenager. Rory sometimes wanted to goof off instead of following Coach Taylor's non-practice exercise routines. And I'd have to remind her of what soccer means for college and maybe a pro career. Moving to, Moving to Your Honor, I'm experiencing Your Honor, I'm some audio sure. difficulty. Audio. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. You can hear that? You can hear that. I can, you're echoing. I can, you're echoing. I'm hearing everybody else is hearing. Yeah. Everybody else is hearing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who it's coming from. Who it's coming from. If I can interject, if you and your second chair are in the same room, 
I don't know if y'all are. Oh, never mind then. No, we are, no, we are not allowed to be. Um, maybe try again. Seems to be working now. Maybe try. We can try again. Should we try that again? Okay, it seems to be working now. I just reset everybody's mutes, so hopefully we'll we'll have good luck from here on. Go Thank ahead. Ready. Moving to page seven, line three. Question: Do you believe that discipline is important for a kid? Yes, one hundred percent. Yes. You know, my granddaddy always said, "Bear the rod, spoil the child," and I believe in that. You can't let them get away with being lazy and entitled. You have to keep them in line. Moving to page nine, line 11, question. Did you have any part in Coach Taylor being hired? Yes, I was instrumental in getting Coach Taylor hired. Wish I hadn't been, but I was. Why did you want Coach Taylor? We wanted a winning coach. I wanted Rory to be coached by a winner. That's what we wanted, and we thought that Coach Taylor was the right person for that job. With that, Your Honor, the defense is done with uh, reading in this portion of the witnesses. Your Honor, I'm going to ask that opposing counsel, when reading, read the the actual line in its entirety and the answer in its entirety. I think opposing counsel left off the last key portion of that statement in that deposition. Uh, any objection to reading the last the last um, line, Ms. Fitzpatrick? Uh, No, Your Honor. Would you please do so then? If the court doesn't mind, is it okay if we get the question and the entire answer again? Just for That's fine. That's fine. One moment, Your Honor. One moment, Your Honor. Directing court and counsel to page nine, line 11. Did you have any part in, sorry, what, line 14? Why did you want Coach Taylor? We wanted a winning coach. I wanted Rory to be coached by a winner. That was what we wanted. And we thought that Coach Taylor was the right person for that job. Looking back now, it was obviously a huge mistake on my part. Hopefully we resolve the echoing problem now. All right. Anything further from either side on this witness? Nothing. No, 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 no. All right. Then Mr. Okolo, you can call your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. At this time, the plaintiff would like to call Aubrey Saracen to the stand. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Good afternoon. Please introduce yourself to the to Your Honor, please. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Aubrey Saracen. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Ms. Saracen? Sure. So I am a 19-year-old, and I currently am a freshman at Rice University. Where'd you go to high school? Um, I went to Waco High School. Playing sports? Yes, I played soccer all four years throughout high school. How'd you like playing soccer? It was awesome. Um, I, you know, hope to walk on to a college team, but I really enjoy the sport of soccer. Are you familiar with someone by the name of Rory Street? Yeah, um, Rory was my best friend growing up, but unfortunately isn't with us anymore. Why is that? Back on September 7th of 2018, Rory passed away on the soccer field. Before we get to that day, Aubrey, I want to start off by talking just a little bit more about it. how long have you and Rory been friends? Basically our whole lives. Um, I mean, we're two peas in a pod. 
was Rory a good soccer player? Rory was amazing. I mean, she did things that no one else could do on the soccer field. She was just a really excellent player. I want to switch gears for a moment and talk about your coach. Who was your coach when you were playing soccer at Waco High? Coach Taylor. What can you tell us about Coach Taylor? Um, you know, Coach Taylor was Coach Taylor. She was a pretty aggressive coach. She got pretty angry and upset sometimes when we weren't performing as well. So she'd make us do different drills as punishment or yell at us. What were some of those drills she would make you do? Well, one of them was called Burma Road. What is Burma Road? It's a very grueling drill. You have to dribble a ball for 30 yards and then sprint 30 yards and then go back the 60 yards on your hands and your knees doing a bear crawl under 100 degree weather. It was a very hard drill to do. How many times did you have to do Burma Road? Anytime Coach Taylor got upset, that was her usual form of reprimand. Have you ever done Burma Road for more than 10 minutes? Um, I think so, yes. More than 15? I think so. Now I want to talk about September 7th, 2018 specifically. Do you remember that day? I do. That's the day that Rory passed away. Did you guys have soccer practice on that day? We did. It started around 3, 3.30. How did soccer practice begin for you that day? Um, it started as it usually did. We went out there, we started doing some drills, but then, you know, I missed some of my passes and Rory wasn't performing as usual. So that's when we had to start doing the Burma Road drill. What do you mean Rory wasn't performing as usual? And she's a, she was an excellent soccer player, but I mean, that day she just wasn't hitting her passes correctly and, you know, some of her kicks were off. Um, she looked a little pale. She just wasn't her usual star. Was that obvious to you? It was to me. I mean, she didn't look very good. Um, she was just pale, you know, her cheeks were super flushed. She seemed out of breath. And it's not like Rory to mess up playing soccer. I mean, she was just, she was such an excellent player that it seemed pretty obvious to me that something was off. Before September 7th of 2018, had you ever seen Rory in that kind of state? No. And when you guys started doing that Burma road drill, what happened? Well, um, we were doing Burma road for a while. And once Coach Taylor thought that Rory had done it enough, I guess. Coach Taylor pulled Rory off to do a different drill on the soccer field. And before we get to that drill, was Coach Taylor saying anything to Rory? Well, before Rory got punished to go to Burma Road, Coach Taylor had said, go on and take your sorry butt to Burma Road. You're useless on the field, so might as well run until you pass out. And that's exactly what happened. Now, when you got to Burma Road, you told us that Coach had to do a different drill. Do you know why? Uh, I don't know why Coach Taylor decided to do that other than she seemed unhappy with how practice was going, but she made Rory do something called a sliding tackle drill. I think she just thought that Rory was goofing around or lollygagging or something. Objection, Your Honor, as to speculation, um... The witness just says she doesn't know why Coach Taylor had Rory do this, and therefore her answer is speculation. Your Honor, the, Your Honor, the witness is just talking about her rationally based perceptions at practice. She was at practice, she was sitting there, she saw the interactions between Coach Taylor and Rory at the time. Coach Taylor was yelling at Rory, you're goofing off, you're going to send you to Burma Road so you can run and pass out. These are just her rationally based perceptions, Your Honor. Overall. When you got to Burma Road, after, I'm sorry, excuse me, after Burma Road, during that slide tackling drill, had that ever been done before? The way that the drill was happening, no. That wasn't something that we usually did. What was happening? 
So uh, Coach Taylor had pulled Rory off from the Bremer Road and brought her back to the soccer field. And so all the other players were lined up and they were facing Rory. And one by one, Coach Taylor pulled in to tackle the ball underneath Rory, which made Rory fall over repeatedly. How many times did Rory get slide tackled, fall over, and get back up? 15. What was Rory's demeanor as this was going on? I mean, she was just pale, out of breath, looked exhausted to me. Um, I mean, it was bad enough where she couldn't even get up herself after being hit. Coach Taylor would yank her up by the back of the jersey and make her stand there and get tackled again. Did the coach ever give Rory any water during that drill? I don't remember. Do you remember the coach ever taking a break during those 15 times? No, there was no break during that. What happened on that 15th time the coach ran that slide tackling drill? Well, normally the coach had yanked Rory back up, but on the 15th time, Rory didn't move. Um, she was just lifeless, and then she started convulsing and having what looked to be a seizure and then she just stopped. Did Roy make it to the hospital? No, I, I think there was an ambulance that was called, but by the time it got there, it was too late. Rory was already gone. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. At this time, we have no further questions, John. Cross-examination, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes, Ronna, may I proceed? You may. Good afternoon, Ms. Saracen. Hi, good afternoon. Let's talk about um, your soccer practices. You'll agree that soccer is a physical sport, right? Yeah. It requires good physical health? It does. Now, prior to September 7th, you've run Burma Road before. Yes, it was something that Coach Taylor often had us do. In fact, there was a designated spot on the soccer field for Burma Road runs, right? Right. Now, to be clear, on September 7th, you were also doing this drill, Burma Road, right? Yes. And you didn't experience chest pains? No, I did not. You didn't collapse on the field that day? I did not, no. You didn't have a seizure, right? No, I didn't. And just to be clear, you weren't taking cocaine that day, were you? No, of course I wasn't. Let's talk about the cocaine that was found in your friend's system, uh, Miss Street. Um, you no, never seen- Who's back not Nevins? Sorry, could you repeat the question? Your Honor, it wasn't, I hadn't asked the question yet. Your Honor, opposing counsel said, I wanna talk about the, out, the cocaine that was found in your friend's system. That's assuming facts that are not in evidence, Your Honor. Response? Your Honor, we're merely asking this witness about what she knows um, pertaining to her best friend dying. Um, the question as an offer of proof would be, have you ever seen Miss Snow, uh, sorry, Miss uh, uh, Street do cocaine before? Your objections ever on. Now, Ms. Harrison, you've never seen Miss Street do cocaine before, right? No, Rory, I've never definitely seen Rory do that. You never heard about her doing drugs? No. And to be clear, you said on direct that Miss Street was your best friend or what, a good friend of yours. Yes, we had been friends for our entire lives. You'd grown up together? Yes. You cared about her? I, of course, yeah, I did. You're close to her family? Yes. Just to be clear, you weren't with Miss Street all the time, right? Uh, um, no, not 24-7, no. You weren't with her at all the minutes leading up to practice, right? No. You don't know what she was doing before practice that morning? No, I don't. But you do know that Miss Street was struggling with school, right? Um. I, I think so, I can't quite recall. Well, you know that Miss Street, your close friend, was stressed out about school, right? Um, that... Your Honor, this is speculation. Your Honor, as an offer of proof, this witness was told this by uh, Miss Street, and therefore it's not speculation. Your Honor, that would be hearsay. Your Honor, this, 
is a statement of the declarant of, uh, of her then existing mental and physical state, and therefore is an exception to hearsay under 8033. Overall. Now you're aware that Miss Street was stressed about school, right? I think she mentioned that, yeah. She also mentioned to you that her parents put a lot of pressure on her, right? Yeah. Thanks for your honors to hearsay. Response? Your Honor, again, this goes, uh, the exception here is 8033. This goes to the declarant's then existing state of mind that there was a lot of pressure being put on her. Your Honor, your parents putting pressure on you is not a state of mind. It does not fall under Rule 8033, then existing state of mind, such as intent, motive, or plan, or sensory or feeling. That doesn't fall under that. Your Honor, it goes to the state of mind of the declarant at the time being stressed out because her parents were putting a lot of pressure on her, and therefore is an exception to hearsay. Um, sustained, Mr. Fellow. You can move on to your next question. Move yes. to strike that testimony, Your Honor. Um, now, Miss Street was a a good soccer player, right? Oh yeah, she was the best on our team. And you'd never see Miss Street complain before during practice. No, she tried her best not to. You didn't see her complain before during other drills she'd done in practice. Not that I can remember, no. Now, you spoke about the um, temperature on direct. You've practiced in high temperatures before, right? Yeah, we have, but this was a day that was just, it was very hot. It's well over 100 degrees. And you've practiced in September before, right? Yes, we had. And in those practices, you never saw Miss Street collapse? No, this had never happened before. Now, when you were running Burma Road on September 7th, Coach Taylor was with other players on the practice field, right? Yes, I think it was probably around 20 yards away or so. Now, you claimed on direct that you saw visible signs of Miss Street, that she was pale, right? Yeah, she was just, I mean, she was such a good player that it was unusual for her to be that inaccurate in practice and miss her passes, but she was also like, physically different. And because it was unusual for Miss Street, you were concerned, right? I was, yes. You were worried about the health of your friend. Yeah, I just uh, wanted... Sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I was worried. Now you never expressed this worry to Coach Taylor, right? No, I didn't. You never expressed this worry to a trainer on the field, right? No. You never expressed this concern and worry to anyone else on the field that day? No, I did not. Despite being worried, you didn't tell your friend to take a break that day, right? No, I didn't tell her that. You didn't run over and get Miss Street any water? No. And to be clear, there was water available on the practice field, right? Yes, I, there was. I don't remember if we got a water break that day. But you, don't rem but you know that you didn't go and get your friend that you were concerned about any water that day, right? Yes, that's true. And just to be clear, you never heard Miss Street ask for any water from the coach that day? Um, I, I don't think so, no. You never heard Miss Street ask for a break? No. Now you talked extensively on direct about these visible signs that you saw, which made you concerned about Miss Street. Do you remember that? Yes. Now, the day after Miss Street's death, you sent a text message to one of your friends about your friend dying, right? Um, I think I remember sending that, yes. And in that text, you said your friend had collapsed out of nowhere, right? Thank you, Your Honor, as to hearsay. Your Honor, we're not using this for the truth of the matter asserted, but rather as an inconsistent uh, statement pursuant to rule 613. The witness on direct talked at length about how she had seen visible signs of her friend um, being unwell. And then in this text the next day mentioned none of those signs. Your Honor, 613 is not an exception to hearsay. Hearsay is defined under rule 800. Under rule 801, a prior inconsistent statement, 801D2, a prior consistent statement can only come in, Your Honor, if before that statement was made under oath. Here, this is a text message, Your Honor. Pursuant to Rule 801 D2, this does not fall under a prior inconsistent statement and is not and is 
not, it is hearsay, Your Honor. There's no recognized exception. 613 is not an exception to hearsay. Your Honor, may I respond? You may briefly respond, Mr. Trump. We're not, you, we're not using this for the truth of the matter asserted in that text message that in fact, this person collapsed out of nowhere, but rather to show that this witness has inconsistent statements as to what happened that day. Your Honor, that goes to the truth. She's using this for the truth of the matter asserted to assert that somehow this happened suddenly. Opposing counsel asked what was happening that day, and this witness has explained that she saw those symptoms. Anything else, those text messages are hearsay, Your Honor. Your objections overruled us to the hearsay. Um, Ms. Fitzpatrick, do have your witness um, confine her remarks to, don't try to stretch them further than what they go. About that. Yes, Your Honor. In that text you exchanged with your friend about Ms. Street's death, you never mentioned that Ms. Street was pale, right? Uh, I don't think so, no. You didn't mention that she was struggling? No. And nowhere in that text did you blame Coach Taylor for what happened to Ms. Street, right? No, I don't think I did. Now, you do blame Coach Taylor for losing your full-time starting spot position as in junior year on the soccer team, right? Um, I mean, it was a choice that she made. It kind of sucked, but it wasn't the end of the world. I mean, no athlete wants to lose their starting spot, but it does happen. To be clear, Coach Taylor gave your position to his kid, to her kid, sorry. Yes, that's true. So that means in your senior year, you no longer had a full-time position on the soccer team. Yes, I was um, second string. And that was upsetting to you, right? Yeah, I mean, I was upset about it. And I mean, like I said, it, it did suck, but it wasn't the worst thing that had ever happened. No further questions, Your Honor. Redirect, Your Honor. Just one moment. All right, redirect, you can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Saracen, do you blame Coach Taylor for what happened to Rory on September 7, 2018? Yeah, I mean, Coach Taylor just wouldn't stop pushing Rory that day. When Coach Taylor was pushing Rory that day, were there visible signs that Rory was tired and exhausted? There were. I mean, I played with Rory for our whole life, and she wasn't herself that day. Now, opposing counsel was asking some questions about those text messages. Do you remember that? I do. Why did you send those text messages? Um, I was just shocked about what had happened. I mean, it's... I saw my best friend die right in front of me and it was shocking. That's why. Do you believe that Rory collapsed out of nowhere? In the sense that it was shocking for me that she was a high schooler that just collapsed. Yeah, I mean, that's not something that you wake up in the morning thinking is in the realm of possibilities. So in that sense, I was surprised by it. I wasn't surprised because of what I'd seen from Rory at practice that day. Now, opposing counsel was asking some questions about telling Coach Taylor what you saw in practice that day. Why didn't you tell Coach Taylor about those symptoms Rory was having? Um, you know, Coach Taylor, Coach Taylor got a little angry sometimes when we complained or we didn't do exactly as we were told. And we were kind of taught not to complain, and I'd already been doing Burma road runs for quite a while that day. I didn't think that what happened would happen, and I regret not saying anything. Thank you. We have no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. With your permission, we ask that she be excused pending no recross. No recross, Your Honor. Your Honor, you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, the witness can step down then. And with that, Your Honor, the plaintiff would like to rest our case in chief. Very well. Do we have anything we need to take up before I tally up time? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, the defense has a motion at this time. Very well. Just one second, Your Honor.
sorry, I'm having some technical difficulty here. Your Honor, the defense moves, um, in viewing the, the defendant's moves for a judgment um, of law pursuant to Rule 50A, um, viewing the evidence in the light most favorable to the non-moving party here, the plaintiff, um, they ha the plaintiff has failed to show that the defendant's action in this case is what caused Rory's death, uh, Rory Street's death. And uh, therefore we move under Rule 50A um, for a judgment as a matter of law. Your response? Your Honor, I think it's pretty clear at this point that Rory died from heat exhaustion as a result of running those drills on September 7, 2018. Had Rory not been running those drills, Rory would not have overheated, suffered from heat exhaustion, and she would still be here with us today, Your Honor. We've heard countless testimony that Coach Taylor knew that Rory was having those symptoms, that it was obvious to people who were on that field that Rory was suffering tremendously at that time. And Coach Taylor continued to have Rory run, continued to have Rory exert energy under that sun, knowing that that could lead to potential injury, Your Honor. We believe that the that viewing the evidence in light most favorable to non-moving party, that being the plaintiff, that we have certainly met our burden of proof in today's case, Your Honor. Very well. Uh, your your JMAL motion will be denied. If y'all would like to grab a quick drink of water while I tally up the times, we will then proceed quickly with the defense's case in chief. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, are the parties ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, I show that the plaintiff has 31 minutes, 34 seconds remaining and the defense has 39.57 remaining. Um, defense, you can start your case in chief whenever you're ready. Yes, Your Honor. Um, prior to calling our uh, first witness, we uh, seek to read in the deposition of Jess Merriweather in its entirety pursuant to stipulation, um, with the exception of the um, part that we mentioned during motions in limine that is on page nine, lines 12 to 20, dealing with the subsequent remedial measure. Very well, you can proceed. Your Honor, at this time, um, may we read out certain portions of that deposition testimony? So you're, you're asking that the entire thing be read, be admitted, be- We're asking the entire um, thing be constructively read into the record. Um, however, we would like to highlight certain portions of the testimony for your honor, uh, with your honor's permission. We don't want to read the whole thing in in order to save the court's time. And your honor, we would object to it being in constructively read in, in its entirety. We have a we have numerous objections to various statements made in this deposition. And just admitting the document in its entirety without going through those, obje those objections seems improper at this point. Sustained. You can read selected portions into the record, um, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes, Your Honor. Um, may I have my co-counsel come up and help me read them? You may. Reading from the, dep the deposition of Jess Merriweather, starting on page two, line eight, uh, sorry, line six, would you please state your name for the record? Hello there, my name is Jess Merriweather. Line 19, question, and what is your job at Waco High? I am an athletic trainer and I also teach health. What is the job of an athletic trainer at a high school? We have various teams and activities at the school that involve some level of physical activity and competition. Everything from football to soccer to volleyball to cheerleading and drill team. As a trainer, I work with the students that participate in those activities to keep them healthy and in shape and to treat any injuries that they have. Do you attend practices? Depending on what time of year it is, it may be, I'm sorry, uh, yes. Depending on what time of year it is, it may be football or soccer or something else. But there is always a trainer at any official practice for our various athletic teams. Moving to page four, line four, question. Have you worked with Coach Taylor? I have. In what capacity? As a trainer. So I've attended soccer practices and soccer games where Coach Taylor was the coach. I've worked with Coach Taylor in order to treat injured players, and I've worked with Coach Taylor just overseeing the students during practices and games. Moving to page eight, line 18. Question. At any time, did you see Rory stumbling, faltering, or slowing down in a way that would have indicated she was in trouble? No, not at all. 
was Rory was Rory sweating hard? I mean, yes, but everyone was, including me. It was a really hot day. Did Rory ever say anything to you about feeling bad that day? Nope, never said anything to me. And here's the thing. I'm there to take care of those players and they know it. I'm kind of a combination trainer and guardian to the team. So they trust me and I trust them to tell me if something is wrong or if they're hurting. Rory didn't say a word and she would have. Objection on speculation. Thoughts? Your Honor, this is, this is based purely on this witness's rationally based perception, um, knowing that the students can come and speak to her whenever they want and whenever they feel sick. Your Honor, knowing that students can come and speak to you doesn't mean that you automatically would know that if a student had a problem, that they would want to come speak to you or that they would even feel comfortable in speaking to you. We don't know the relationship between these two and Your Honor. At this point, it's speculation because we don't know the thoughts and feelings of Rory. Thank you. Move to strike that portion of the testimony. Granted. Did Rory ever say anything to you about feeling bad that day? No, never said anything to me. And here's the thing, I'm there to take care of those players and they know it. I'm kind of a combination trainer and guardian to the team. So they trust me and I trust them to tell me if something is wrong or if they're hurting. Rory didn't say a word. Are players allowed to get water when they want it? Yes. All they have to do is ask, even if we're not on a water break. With that, Your Honor, um, those are our designated portions for this witness. Very well. Uh, plaintiff's counsel, do you have a question? Would you like to yes. read it? Yes. Your Honor, we do have portions. My co-counsel is going to pop on screen so we can run through them. Very well. Starting on page three, Line 19, you told us earlier that you are 28 years old. Is that pretty common age for an athletic trainer in your position? Well, I'm the youngest trainer in the Waco Independent School District. In fact, I'm the youngest one ever in the history of the position. So I guess that gives you your answer. Are you familiar with Coach Riley Taylor? I am. Who was Coach Reese Taylor? Coach Taylor is the varsity soccer coach at Waco High. Have you worked with Coach Taylor? I have. In what capacity? Uh, as a trainer. So I've attended soccer practices and soccer games where Coach Taylor was the coach. I've worked with Coach Taylor in order to treat injured players, and I've worked with Coach Taylor just overseeing the students during practices and games. Do you have any role in designing drills for practices? No, that's all Coach Taylor. Do you have any role in disciplining players? No, that's all Coach Taylor as well. I mean, I'm certainly there overseeing on-field discipline that takes place, but I'm not directing the discipline or deciding who should be disciplined. Page eight, line eight. Were you at practice the day Rory died? I was. Did you see Rory running Burma Road? I saw Rory uh, over on Burma Road, but I wasn't watching her closely. Did you ever see Rory during the slide tackling drill? Again, I saw uh, that it was happening and I certainly saw parts of it, but I didn't watch it closely. What were you doing while all this was going on? I was taping another student's ankle about 40 yards away. Do you still work at Waco High? Yeah, I got a promotion. I got promoted as uh, or to head trainer about two months ago. Uh, so I'm, it's going great. Do you still work with Coach Taylor? Of course I do. I work with all the coaches, Coach Taylor included. In fact, Coach Taylor is the one that wrote me the, recommend, the recommendation letter for the promotion to head trainer. Again, Coach Taylor has a lot of faith in me and my abilities, and I just want to try and impress him or her. Or, I'm sorry, her. With that, we have nothing further from this witness, Your Honor. Anything further from the defense? Yes, Your Honor, prior to calling our uh, witness, we ask to move in exhibits 18 and 19 pursuant to the pretrial order. Um, I believe these are already admitted. Um, they are. We would like to read in certain portions from those exhibits at this time. Um, very well. Directing court and counsel to exhibit 18, page two. 
Overview of opinion. Here is the opinion that I have reached in this case. Based on a reasonable degree of professional and or medical certainty, Rory Street's death was caused, at least in part, by the use of cocaine. Analysis. According to the toxicology report, when Rory Street's blood was drawn and tested at approximately 7.30 hour, 7.30 on September 8, 2018, it tested positive for 60 nanograms per milliliter of cocaine. Moving to the bottom of that same page, cocaine can ultimately lead to cardiac arrhythmia, heart attacks, cerebral hemorrhage, or stroke and heart failure. Additionally, cocaine can induce hypothermia, which lowers the threshold for heat stroke because it inhibits the body's natural cooling process by causing vasoconstriction in the extremities, which keeps most of the blood supply internal. This impairs the body's natural cooling because natural cooling happens when blood is cooled by going to the skin. Moving to page three, Rory complained of chest pain feeling funny, which could be related to any number of the symptoms of cocaine use. Groaning, which could be related to nausea and convulsing, twitching on the ground. All these symptoms are consistent with cocaine use. Um, same page, it is true that the amount of cocaine found in Rory Street's system was nominal, only 60 nanograms. However, Rory Street's blood was drawn long after her death and potentially even longer after Rory actually ingested the cocaine. Therefore, this test may not represent the actual amount of cocaine that was in Rory Street's blood at the time of the incident or earlier in the day. And it's possible that the amount of cocaine in the system was actually much higher throughout the course of that day leading up to practice. Your Honor, pursuant to reading that in, we asked to admit exhibits 14 and 15. Um, for Your Honor's reference, 14 is the autopsy of Rory uh, Street and uh, 15 is a toxicology report from Rory Street. We would object to both, Your Honor, as he, we would object to not the um, medical examiner's report, rather, Your Honor, we would object to exhibit six, exhibit 15, rather, that being the tax college report. Let's take them one at a time. So as to exhibit 14, did you have any objections? No objections, Your Honor. Then we'll go ahead and admit exhibit 14. And now for exhibit 15, you said you had an objection? Here, so, Your Honor. And what is, what is Exhibit 15 is the toxicology report? Yes, Your Honor. What's your response to hearsay? Your Honor, it's an exception to hearsay under 8038. This is a public record. It's a toxicology report from the medical examiner's office and therefore is not subject to the rules, as an exception to the rules of hearsay. Your Honor, certainly a toxicology report is not a public record. You cannot publicly access toxicology reports from a medical examiner's office for just anyone you so choose. It is by definition not a public record. Your Honor, it is a public record. It was done by the medical examiner's office. This is a public record under 8038. Your Honor, just because the medical examiner's office creates a report does not mean it's a public record. We're going to overrule the objection and admit the exhibit. Yes, Your Honor. With that, uh, we call the defendant, Coach Taylor, to the stand. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Good afternoon. Please introduce yourself to the court. I am Reese Taylor. Where are you from, Ms. Taylor? I'm from Waco. Did you go to school here? Yes, I went to Waco High. And what do you do for a living? I'm a coach. What do you coach? Uh, soccer. I coach at Waco High. And how long have you been a soccer coach for? Uh, well, I've been a coach in general for 26. 26 or 28 years, uh, but I've been a soccer coach for 20 plus seasons. Now, um, what exactly do you coach um, in high school? What league of soccer? Oh, varsity. Now, I want to talk to you a bit more about your coaching experience. Um, how long have you been a varsity soccer coach at uh, Waco High? Since I moved here um, six years ago. And in those six years, has uh, Waco High's team been successful? Yes, ma'am. How so? Well, five out of the six years, we've won district. Um, we've even been able to win semifinals once. Now, can you tell the court a little bit about your coaching methods that you use to coach your players on the team? I, I'm a, I can be a strict coach. Um, I'm kind of old school. I definitely believe in conditioning. My kids, I want them to be able to perform at the top peak at the peak of their physical performance for uh, so that we can win games and win them safely. 
Now, um, in coaching your students, is safety a concern? Absolutely. And um, how so? Uh, sports can be dangerous in general, especially in Texas summers. So we have to keep safety as our top priority. Now you mentioned that you can be a strict coach. Um, if a student does something wrong in practice, what do you do? We discipline them. I discipline them. How, how do you discipline them? Uh, the normal way we use is Burma Road, or at least that's the first line of defense is Burma Road. Now just, just to clarify, um, Ms. Taylor, what is Burma Road? Burma Road is a tradition at Waco High. I actually ran it whenever I was in school there some 30 years ago. Um, it is where you sprint 30 yards and then you dribble the ball for another 30 yards, make a goal. And if you miss it, you have to restart. And if you don't miss it, you bear curl back to the beginning. And you keep on doing that until I tell you to stop. Now, just to be clear, is, is this a type of drill? Burma Road is, um, it's more of a disciplinary technique, I, I believe. And is this something you conduct during soccer practice? Yes. Now, if when you conduct a Burma Road um, disciplinary um, thing during your practice, um, is safety still a concern, the safety of your players? Absolutely. Now, did you come up with Burma Road yourself? No. Do, do you know where it comes from? Um, actually, no. It, um, as I said, it's been a technique that's been used at Waco High since before I went to school there. I know I ran Burma Roads a couple times. Now, Ms. Taylor, I want to talk to you about Rory Street. Um, did you coach him? Her? Yes. yes. And what was your relationship like with her? I thought we had a pretty healthy coach student relationship relationship. Um, every once in a while, she had a, a little bit of trouble listening, but just a little bit of uh, just getting her to run a Burma road usually worked to straighten up her attitude. She was a really good athlete and a good student. Is a player not listening an issue during practice? Absolutely. If you lose the focus of one teenager, you lose the focus of the whole horde of teenagers. Now I want to turn your attention to September 7th of 2018. Do you remember that day? Yes, ma'am. Uh, what happened that day? Uh, well, it started out pretty normal. It was a hot summer day in Texas. We were, it was a practice day. We've been pra practicing for a couple weeks because um, the season was starting. And um, well, that was the day that Rory collapsed and died. Now, Ms. Taylor, um, we'll get to Rory collapsing in just a moment, but prior to that happening, what was your interaction like with uh, Miss Street that day? She wasn't, she wasn't acting normal. Um, she was goofing off and seemed distracted. And did you do anything in response to her goofing off or, or being distracted? Yes, I sent her to run Burma Road. Um, now, once you sent her to run Burma Road, did you do anything else after that? Yes, uh, I was watching because I was, me and Miss Weather are always watching the kids. And I was watching her and Audrey on, or Aubrey on um, Burma Road, and she still seemed distracted. So in order to try to get her attention, I had her do some slide tackle drills. Can you explain to the court what a slide tackle drill is? Slide tackles are a, um, a technique that's used in soccer to take the ball from another player. And um, we practice those because if you don't practice and your team isn't ready to deal with them, they can be dangerous. So what happened when um, Miss Street did the side tackle drill? Well, um, she, she was falling a little bit, but that's normal in a side tackle drill. Um, as I said, they're, they're physical drills. And, but we were watching her closely, me and Miss Weather, and she didn't seem any different. Any, she wasn't sweating any more than any of the other players, and she wasn't complaining of any pain, and she just kept on getting up. So um, we just kept on going with the drill until she collapsed, and I immediately called it and ran over, called 911, but it was too late. 
Do you remember how many slide tackle drills she went through before collapsing? It was 14 or 15. Now I want to talk to you a bit more about Miss Street during that practice. Before you sent her to run Burma Road, did it ever occur to you that something was physically wrong with her? No, ma'am. Was there anything about her physically at all that concerned you? No, she was sweating, but it was no more than any other, any other player. Did that opinion change once Miss Street started running Burma, Burma Road? No. Now, is Burma Road a physically demanding um, drill? Yeah, it's a difficult drill. Now, did you ever think that Burma Road would cause Miss Rory, Miss Street physical harm? No. And during this time, did Miss Street ever tell you that she wasn't feeling well? No. Did she say anything to you while running that drill? No. Now, if she had said that she wasn't feeling well, would she still have been forced to run that drill? No. Now, moving on to the slide tackle drill, at any point during that drill, did you notice Miss Street um, having any physical problems? No, none that were out of the ordinary. Did you, did he seem, does she seem pale to you at all? No. Did she tell you that she felt unwell? No. Did she ever ask you for a break? No. Did she tell you that she's experiencing chest pains? No. Did she ever ask you for any water during this time? No. Now, finally, Ms. Taylor, I want to talk to you about how you run practices generally. Do you provide the players with water on the field? Yes, ma'am. And is that at every practice? Yes. And how often are um, your players allowed to take breaks to get water? Anytime they need one, they can take a break to get water. Now, aside from yourself, are there any trainers on, on the field during practices? Yes, Miss Merriweather. Now, if an athlete ever tells you that they aren't feeling well, do you force them to continue practicing? Absolutely not. I send them straight to Miss Merriweather. Now, were you aware during your practice on September 7th that Miss Street had cocaine in her system? No. Would you have had Miss Street do those drills that you just talked about if you had known she had cocaine in her system? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. You can proceed. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Taylor. Good afternoon. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. I want to talk about the extreme dangers heat, exposed, heat has when you're coaching high school soccer. Now, you understand that practicing in extreme heat can have side effects on students. Yes. You understand that those side effects can be very dangerous for students. Yes. So it's up to you to take precautions. Yes, sir. You understand that these side effects can be fatigue. Yes, sir. Paleness in skin. Yes, sir. Redness. Yes, sir. Vomiting. Yes, sir. Chest pains. Yes, sir. Profuse sweating. Yes, sir. You understand that if a student is experiencing these symptoms, well, that can be pretty serious. Yes, sir. It's your job to identify and make sure that that's not happening. Yes, sir. Because if you fail at that job, a student could die. Yes, sir. Now, I want to talk about the standard of care you owe your students as a high school soccer coach. Now, in order to stay up to date on all the latest standards in the field of coaching, you go to different trainings. Yes, sir. These trainings expose you to a lot of different industry standards, right? Yes, sir. They talk about slide tackle. Yes, sir. They talk about heat exposure. Yes, sir. They give you tips and recommendations that you should instill as a coach. Yes, sir. You understand that when you go to these various trainings, they're pulling together information that you need to know. Yes, sir. Now, typically, you go to an annual meeting of high school soccer coaches, right? Yes. And that's just for here in Texas. Yes, sir. You went to that meeting in July of 2018, right? Yes, sir. That was a few months before the incident in September of 2018. Yes, sir. At that meeting, they told you best practices for yes. dealing with students and the heat. Yes. You knew that if, degree, if the weather reached above 100 degrees, 
that you ought to give students a break every 15 minutes. That was the recommendation. You knew that if the temperature reached between 90 and 96 degrees, well, you ought to give them a break every 30 minutes. Yes, sir. You knew that if you didn't do this, well, that could have dangerous consequences, right? Yes, sir. They told you that this is the standard you owe your students as a coach. It was their, it was their guideline. That was the guideline for you as a coach, coaching high school soccer right here in Texas. Yes, sir. Now, I want to talk about the precautions you took to avoid Rory's injury. Now, you intentionally had them practice in the afternoon. Yes, sir. That was an intentional decision on your part. Yes, sir. You had them start around 3 p.m. Yes, sir. Now, this was when the temperature just got to reaching above 100 degrees on September 7th of 2018. Yes, sir. And you had them go out and practice anyway. Yes, sir. You didn't do this for them to get better, right? Um, I would say I did do it for them to condition them. Well, to use your words, I did it to toughen the students up, right? Yes. You figured they needed to learn to hold up under the sun and the heat. Yes. Now, you typically hold practice for two to three hours, right? Yes, sir. You sure understanding that the guidelines also tell you that when it's hot outside, above 96 degrees, you should only hold practice for two hours. That's what the guidelines say, yes. But still, you typically hold practice for two to three hours. Yes, sir. Now, you didn't schedule breaks every 15 minutes on September 17th of 2018. I don't remember how many breaks happened on that day. You can't tell the judge with any certainty today that you gave the students a break every 15 minutes. I can't say that with certainty, no. You can't tell the judge today with any certainty that you upheld those guidelines that they told you that you owed your students as a Texas high school soccer coach. Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about the kind of player that Rory was. Now, he was one, she was one of the best athletes that you have ever coached. Absolutely. And she was tough. Yes. She was hardworking. Yes. She was a leader on the team. Yes. You felt that she was one of the best players that had ever touched Waco high school soccer. Yes, sir. Now, typically, you've been practicing with Rory for the past three years, right? Yes, sir. You knew how she would normally act. Yes, sir. But when you got to practice on September 17th, well, something seemed different. Yes, sir. She was your star athlete, but she was missing passes. Yes, sir. She was missing wide open goals. Yes, sir. She wasn't putting herself in the position on the field that she needed to put herself in. Yes, sir. Something seemed different. Yes, sir. Yep. I want to talk about how you responded to that. You never asked if she needed a break. No, sir. You never asked Rory if she needed any water. No, sir. You never asked Rory if she needed any shade. No, sir. You sent him, you sent her on Burma Road instead. Yes, sir. Over and over again, Rory was sprinting 30 yards. Yes, sir. Dribbling a soccer ball 30 yards. Yes, sir. Shooting at a goal. Yes, sir. And then bear crawling back another 60 yards. Yes, sir. You had her do this over and over again until you told her to stop. Yes, sir. To use your words here, it looked like she was dogging it. Yes, sir. But she was exhausted. Um, I, I don't remember if, I don't remember saying I thought she was exhausted. I just so thought, thought she was dogging it. Yeah. They get okay. it too easy. Yeah. So you decided to discipline her another way. Yes, sir. A way that you had never done before. Yes, sir. A way that you had never even seen before. Yes, sir. A way that no one had even recommended you do. No, sir. Nobody had. You had a slide tackling drill. Yes, sir. You know that those Texas guidelines tell you that you only slide tackle when it's necessary. In a game, yes. You only slide tackle when it's necessary. Yes, sir. Yet you had her running that drill anyway. Yes, sir. 
You had students line up one after another, right? Yes, sir. You had them run at Rory. Yes, sir. Fly tap. Yes, sir. Rory would fall. Yes, sir. And then she tried to get back up. She would get back up. She looked tired. Yes, sir. She looked fatigued. A little bit, yes. Yet you had to continue to run that drill. Yes, sir. And then when she wouldn't get up, well, you grabbed her by her shirt and you picked her up. I never touched her. So if we were to hear today from a student on that team that you grabbed Rory by her shirt, picked her up and had her run that drill again, would that student be lying? Yes, sir. You had to run this drill 15 times. Yes, sir. She would fall and get back up. Yes. Fall, get back up. She did it a couple times, yes. Fall and get back up. Yes. You did this because you wanted to discipline Rory. The um, Burma Road was a discipline. This was more of a drill. Is it your testimony that this was not for discipline? Um, one of the reasons was discipline. To be clear, you had to run this slide tackling drill for discipline. One of the reasons, yes. And on that 15th time, Rory didn't get back up. No, sir. You think Rory got your point? No, sir. We have no further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. You were asked a series of questions on cross-examination about these drills um, that you conduct during your practices, Ms. Taylor. Why do you conduct drills for your players? Uh, well, to condition them for one. Um, it's hot in Texas and you've got to be able to stand up to the heat to be able to play in your peak condition safely. Uh, so the safety and conditioning and training. And when you're conducting these drills, do you think about player safety? Absolutely. Now you were asked a series of questions about these guidelines. Um, do you remember that on cross? Yes. Do you know how these guidelines were created? No. Do you know where the guidelines that uh, council was referring to are from? No. Do you know based on those guidelines, if you're required to give your players a set number of breaks every practice? No. Did you give your players breaks, Ms. Taylor? Yes, ma'am. Would you ever deny a player a water break if they asked for it? No. Did you make sure to, make, uh, to give water at every practice? Yes. Now, the guidelines referred to during cross um, talk about slide tackling. Did you teach your students how to slide tackle properly? Yes, sir, ma'am. And you were also asked about whether something was off with Ms. Street um, that day. Sitting here today, do you know if something was off that day? Now I do. And what was that? She um, was later found to have cocaine in her system. I just want to ask the opinion, if I may be heard. Sorry, I couldn't hear what your objection was. Improper opinion, Your Honor. Finally, be heard. Yes. And also a lack of a lack of foundation, Your Honor. For this witness to say that something was off with Rory that day, and that being off, and something was off that being cocaine, is an improper opinion, Your Honor. This witness is not a doctor. She can't attribute Rory's behavior to that being definitively because of cocaine, Your Honor. Response, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Your Honor, we're not we're not asking this witness to go into medical testimony. We're merely asking her if she's aware of what was off that day. Counsel went into this extensively on cross examination, and this witness is merely going to talk about what she knows about the um, about Miss Street. It is not an opinion, Your Honor. Your Honor, what she learned after the fact is actually not probative. She didn't learn until days later that Rory had cocaine in her system. She did not know that on the day in question. And because she didn't know that, that's not probative. And furthermore, Your Honor, for her to talk about that that's the reason why Rory is off is an improper opinion. It would require her to have some sort of medical expertise to definitively match her, that Rory's behavior on September 7th to that being attributed, attributed to cocaine, Your Honor. It's improper. Your Honor, 
this witness is the defendant in this case. She was sitting inside the courtroom during this entire case. She has heard the toxicology report and we're not asking her to give a medical opinion. We are merely asking her if she knows about what was off that day, which counsel opened the door to during his cross-examination. Miss um, Coach Taylor can say yes or no whether she is aware of the presence of cocaine in um, Rory Street system. However, she can't be giving opinions about whether or not it was the cause of what was off. Yes, Your Honor. Move to strike that testimony, Your Honor. Um, in as much that the testimony was related to causation, yes. Yes, Your Honor. Are you aware if Miss Street took cocaine that day on September 7th? I wasn't then, but now I am. Improper opinion, Your Honor, objection. For this witness to say that Rory took cocaine on that day is an improper opinion. The toxicology report says nothing about when that cocaine, if any, was ingested. Your Honor, I can rephrase. Stand to rephrase your question. To strike, Your Honor. Ms. Taylor, are you aware if Ms. Street had cocaine in her system the day she was practicing soccer and died on your field? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. We do have a recross, Your Honor. You can proceed with your recross. Ms. Taylor, you told us on redirect examination that you don't know where those guidelines come from. Is that true? Yes, sir. But you actually do know where those guidelines come from, don't you? Well, I know who put on the um, clinic I went to. Are you familiar with Exhibit 11? Uh, I can pull it up. No need to pull it up quite yet. You were you were deposed in today's case, right? Yes, sir. In that deposition, you were asked about Exhibit 11. Yes, sir. You told us you were familiar with Exhibit 11. Uh, I don't remember. Would you like us to refresh your memory? Please. I'm just gonna ask my second chair to put up the, the deposition of the witness, the last page of that deposition. There we go. One moment, Your Honor. One second. All right. Now, Ms. Taylor, take a moment and read that deposition for me. When your memory is refreshed, please let me know. Okay. My memory is refreshed now. Thank you. Go ahead and take that away for me, Drew. You were shown Exhibit 11 in a deposition, right? Yes, sir. You're familiar with Exhibit 11? Yes, sir. Your Honor, at this time, we'd like to publish Exhibit 11 for impeachment purposes, Your Honor. You may. Objection, Your Honor, as to improper impeachment. This witness is talking about where the guidelines came from themselves. That she attended this presentation is not an issue today. Counsel is trying to impeach this witness by saying that she didn't go to this, this presentation, although she did. The question that was asked during redirect was whether she knows where those guidelines come from. The Your source Honor, of the actual guidelines. That is not a proper impeachment, Your Honor. Your Honor, she was asked where the guidelines came from. She said she didn't know. These guidelines clearly come from the Texas High School Soccer Association annual coaches meeting that she testified on cross-examination that she attended on July in July of 2018, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, sorry, Your Honor. Go ahead. She's talking in that in her testimony, she's talking about the slides that she saw that were from the meeting of the high school association. Where the guidelines themselves come from, we don't know, and that's not in her testimony. Therefore, this is an improper impeachment. Mr. Uh, Mr. Okolo, if you'd like to get the witness to say that she knows where the, um, where the slides were from, being that they were from the Texas Girls Coaches Association presentation, that's fine. We're not gonna probe her knowledge on where those, um, where the slides were actually formulated, who put them together, other than the fact that they came from the, the Coaches Association meeting. Yes, Your Honor. You know that those guidelines came from the Texas High School Soccer Coaches Association yes, annual meeting. Yes, sir. You are not refuting those guidelines here in court today. I'm sorry, um, you broke up. You, you are not refuting those guidelines here in court today. No, sir. You don't believe those guidelines are inaccurate. No, sir. You took that information as truthful. Uh, as a truthful guideline, yes. You took that information as something that you should follow as a Texas high school soccer coach. Well, 
as a recommendation. Yes. Thank you. We have no further questions. Any further redirect? No, Your Honor, may this witness be excused? She may. All right, we'll take about a minute long break. I will finish up the math. Oh. Your Honor, in this jurisdiction, we are allowed rebuttal testimony. And at this time, I would like to read a brief portion of what's already been admitted into evidence from the expert witness report in today's case, if I may. Um, you may. Referring the court's attention to the expert witness report of Dr. Reed, Reagan, sorry, Your Honor, on page three, it reads, based on all the above, it is my opinion with a reasonable degree of medical certainty that Rory Street died as a result of heat exhaustion and or heat stroke on September 8th of 2018. It is also my opinion within a reasonable degree of medical certainty that Rory Street's death was not a result of cocaine use. First, even if there was cocaine use on that day in question, there is no indication that Rory Street was a habitual user of cocaine as indicated on the autopsy report by the fact that there was no irritation of the throat. Drug tests for cocaine typically have a lower cutoff level between five and 150 nanograms per milliliter, with five being very low and 150 being very high. The amount of cocaine found in Rory Street's system was only 60 nanograms per milliliter, which is a finding consistent with the ingestion of only a nominal amount of cocaine or that there was a great deal of time between the ingestion and testing. And with that, we have no further rebuttal testimony, Your Honor. All right, anything further from the parties before we proceed to closing arguments? Nothing further, Your Honor, but just ask for a brief, maybe two minute recess before we get to closing arguments. Okay, we will take a two minute recess and we come back at 3.43. And I will have a time count for you then. Thank you, Your Honor. The party is ready to proceed to closing argument? Yes, we are, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, for the plaintiff, you have 17 minutes, three seconds left. For the defense, 2339. Thank you, Your Honor. Plaintiff's counsel, you can proceed when ready. May it please the court. And opposing counsel, the defendant knew that there was something different about Rory Street on September 7th of 2018 at soccer practice. The best player the defendant had ever had somehow out of nowhere couldn't do the simple task that she normally would knock out of the ballpark. She couldn't do it in 105 degree weather. Her skin was red, lifeless, pale. She was breathing heavy. She couldn't breathe. She was gasping for air. But instead of asking if she was okay, asking if she needed a break, asking if she just needed some water, the defendant continued to discipline, continued to punish, and continued to push and push and push and literally ran Rory to death. Your Honor, that's exactly what this case is all about. Now, as the plaintiff in today's case, we had the burden of proof. It was our responsibility to prove that the defendant did not act like a reasonably prudent person would have done in a similar situation. Now, today we've laid out ample evidence as to exactly how Coach Taylor failed to uphold that standard of care, Your Honor. First, we heard from Coach Taylor herself. herself. She took the stand and explained to you the guidelines that she was supposed to follow from the Texas High School Soccer Coaches Association. You heard that in those guidelines, it was important that if it was above 100 degrees outside, that students were supposed to have a break every 15 minutes. Your Honor, she took the stand today and she explained to you that, well, I can't say with any degree of certainty that that's exactly what I did. We heard furthermore that there was no shade provided, that there was no Gatorade provided. The only thing provided was water. We didn't hear anything about a single break. I asked her whether or not she followed the guidelines to a T and she said no. Did not, cannot say for certain that she followed those guidelines, that she followed her standard of care. Your Honor. Now this case, it can seem complicated, right? The coach, she has a certain responsibility. She owes that responsibility to her students. 
It's her job to make sure her students are staying safe, that her students are not pushing themselves too hard, that her students aren't pushing themselves past their limits. That's her job. She told you that today. But we didn't hear that she followed that job, Your Honor. We heard from numerous witnesses today that Rory was struggling, that something was different about Rory that day. We heard definitively from an expert witness, Dr. Ray, that it wasn't because of cocaine use, that it was because of heat exhaustion. In 105 degree weather, Rory's body could not cool down fast enough because she was running those 30 yards, dribbling those 30 yards, bear crawling 60 yards, shooting on goal. She was being slide tackled, dropping to the ground, getting back up, dropping to the ground, getting back up, all in 105 degree weather, Your Honor. The defendant pushed and pushed and pushed until Rory could not exert any more energy. It was the defendant's responsibility to make sure that didn't happen. Today, we've heard time and time again that this defendant did not do what she should have done on that day. Now, Rory, Rory was a hard working student a star athlete, did everything that she could to be the best of the best, to go division one, to get that college scholarship, folks, it was taken away. As a high schooler, she didn't know her limits. She was still trying to figure it out. She was still trying to figure herself out. She relied on the school staff, the trainer, her coach, to make sure she did what she was supposed to do, that she was gonna be safe. But those folks let her down. Now, opposing counsel may want you to believe, Your Honor, that this was all because of cocaine use. But Your Honor, you're gonna have the opportunity to look at the defense's expert report. In that report, that defense, the expert makes it clear that, well, when there are signs of cocaine use, signs of an overdose, there's gonna be triggers. There's going to be signals. We're going to see signs of that coming. It doesn't just happen. On one hand, opposing counsel wants you to believe that Rory somehow drug overdosed all of a sudden with no signs, but their expert witness explains to you, Your Honor, that their signs would have been seen. It explains that there would have been warning signs that this was coming on. You'll look at the expert testimony of Dr. Reagan. Dr. Reagan is gonna show that those similar signs align with heat exhaustion and that those signs would have been visible we heard that Aubrey saw Rory struggling, grasping for air, tired, hunched over. You heard that she had to be pulled up by the back of her jersey just to stand back up to be slide tackled and knocked back down again. But what was the result? Nothing. All the defendant did, or all the defendant needed to do was to take a step back for 30 seconds, maybe even 10, and just ask Rory if she was okay. She admitted today, Your Honor, that she knew something was off, something was different, that her star player was missing wide open shots, missing passes. She was dogging it, Your Honor. But she did nothing about it. What a reasonable coach in that situation would have done is asked if she was okay. Asked if she needed water. Asked if she needed a break, shade, or go see the athletic director about 50 yards away. But the defendant did none of that. And it led to Rory's untimely death. It's for these reasons, Your Honor, that we're going to ask you hold this defendant responsible for her actions. Thank you. Closing argument, argument, Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes, Your Honor. You can proceed when you're ready. Yes, Your Honor. Now the plaintiff is looking for someone to blame for the loss of her daughter. And that's understandable. 
it's hard enough to lose a child, let alone to accept that your child was responsible for her own death. Now, what happened here is a tragedy, but this tragedy is not Coach Taylor's fault. Yes, my client has a duty to protect the health and safety of her players, and this is a duty that she takes seriously. She cares about each and every one of her students, but my client cannot protect her players from what they do off the field and what, from, what they, what, from what she doesn't know. Now you heard the plaintiff repeat many times that there was something different about Miss Street in practice on September 7th. And they're right. The difference here was that Miss Street took cocaine before she came to practice. And that's why their star player was off and making mistakes during practice. That was the difference that day. But the defendant had no idea that Miss Street was using cocaine. If Miss Street had not made the choice to take that cocaine before practice, she would still be alive today. Now, in asserting this, as a defense, we took on a burden which we have met. However, the plaintiff has failed to meet theirs. They were required to prove that their case beyond a, by a preponderance of the evidence, and they have failed to do that. They've repeatedly pointed at Coach Taylor's drills as a proximate cause of Miss Taylor's death, sorry, Miss Street's death, but they've provided, they failed to provide any testimony about how these drills are unsafe or that the defendant, Coach Taylor, failed to exercise ordinary care. And that's because they can't, Your Honor. Now you heard my client on direct, she is an experienced coach. Someone has been dedicated to this job for the last 26 years of her life. Now she was very open about the purpose of these sorts of drills. If a player acts out, misses practice, does something wrong, they have to go through a drill. These instill accountability, discipline, and teamwork, things that are essential for a team like the varsity soccer team to succeed. This is just like in school, if you get in trouble in class, you get detention. Now my client believes in pushing her athletes so they can reach their highest potential. This is, this is after all a competitive varsity soccer team. By its very nature, competition is essential. Students have to try out for these positions and prove at every practice that they belong here. And yes, Coach Taylor runs a tight ship, but it's what's necessary and effective. And you heard no testimony to oppose this. Now on September 7th, Miss Street appeared to not be playing to her full potential. Now Coach Taylor had no idea this was due to the fact that she had taken cocaine before practice. She thought her star player was just being lazy which was reasonable to believe under the circumstances. So because of this, she had Miss Street run Burma Road, a decades old Waco High tradition, a drill meant to discipline and motivate soccer players during practice. A tradition that you didn't hear as a result in any other injuries. A tradition that even the coach herself has participated in. This drill is important, it builds stamina, character, and the plaintiff has not proven that it is an unsafe drill. Now, when the Burma Road appeared to not help motivate Miss Street, Coach Taylor tried a second drill, a slide tackling drill. And while this was a new drill, that doesn't mean it was unsafe. It was done on a soccer field, with the coach around and with other trainers around under supervision. Yes, it was a form of discipline for Miss Street, but it was also practice for each player on the field that day. Now remember what Coach Taylor said. Yes, Miss Street was struggling, but she never showed any physical signs that she was unwell. If she had, Coach Taylor would have stopped those drills and stopped the practice. My client was carefully monitoring the situation throughout, and yes, Miss Street was sweating, but she wasn't sweating more than any other player on the field. And as to her falling down during these drills, well, that's a part of the drill. Players get tackled and they get back up. And Miss Street got back up, 
multiple times. What my client was not aware of is that Miss Street's struggles were connected to the cocaine that she had ingested before the practice. Unfortunately, Cochea did not know about this. And that's because Miss Street never told her. That is not Coach Taylor's fault. Now you heard Coach Taylor explain that she cares about the safety of her players and she makes sure that her practices are safe. Despite running a tight ship, she always prioritizes player safety over everything else, winning, competitions, practice, everything. That's why you have a trainer at every practice, a trainer like Miss Merriweather, who you heard from today, whose job it is to tend to injured players and make sure they stay safe and healthy. But this is a two-way street, Your Honor. The players have a responsibility for their own health too. If they feel faint, unwell, uneasy, or that they can't continue with practice, they need to let someone know, whether it's a coach or a trainer. And now you heard Miss Street's best friend on cross, Aubrey. She claimed that she was very concerned and very worried about her friend, but at no point did she notify anyone about how her friend was feeling. At no point did she notify anyone about Miss Street feeling ill. Miss Street also told absolutely no one on the field that she wasn't feeling well. You can't expect to be helped if you pretend that everything is okay. Now, at no point did Miss Street ask for a break, ask for water, ask my client to stop, or even as silly as it sounds, say, listen, I have cocaine in my system. I need to take a step back from practice. Because if she had, if Miss Street had done that, we would not be here today because she would not have been allowed to continue soccer practice. And that is why the cocaine in her system is the proximate cause of her death on September 7th. Now we understand it was hot that day. We heard testimony about that, but this isn't the first hot day in Texas. Miss Street had practiced in the heat on countless occasions before. You heard her friend testify about that, but she never collapsed before. She never experienced seizures like this before. This time, something was different. She had cocaine in her system. A substance that you heard makes it difficult for her body to cool down in that hot Texas heat, making her more prone to heat stroke and heat exhaustion. That is why she died, Your Honor. Nobody, especially not my client, stopped Miss Street from taking a break that day. She just never asked for one. And, she was, and then she collapsed before the scheduled one. Now there's no mandated break time requirement for high school soccer practices, despite what the plaintiff wants you to believe. The guidelines they refer to are merely guidelines. And they came from a high school PowerPoint presentation at a meeting attended by other coaches. These are not requirements that my client is bound by. She has a duty to keep her players safe and healthy and that's what she did. The coach told you today that water is always available on the field and players can get that whenever they want to, as often as they need to. So breaks were essentially constantly allowed. If you want water, you get water. And yes, there is an official break per practice, but if a player asks for water, they can just go and get it. And that's what happened on my client's field. Instead, Miss Street made a decision to push through with practice that day on September 7th without taking a break for water and without telling anyone she wasn't feeling well. And without telling anyone she had cocaine in her system. Now, maybe she was scared to tell anyone or Coach Taylor about this cocaine, or maybe she thought it did, wouldn't make a difference. Either way, this is not my client's fault. Now, you heard testimony from Mr. London today that it was the cocaine that caused Miss Street to die that day. You heard that cocaine can cause heart attacks and it can also cause the heart to swell, which makes it harder for the heart to pump blood around the body. Now it's a simple proposition and it's a sad one, but cocaine kills and cocaine killed Miss Street on September 7th. Now, the plaintiff tried to argue today that because there were nominal amounts of cocaine found in the autopsy, 
this means she wasn't a habitual user of cocaine and that it didn't cause her death. However, you heard our expert, Mr. London, explain to you why there were nominal amounts found. Her blood was taken for the autopsy at least a day after she died. It's possible and likely that the day that she died, the content of cocaine in her blood was much higher. But more importantly, Mr. London told you that it doesn't matter how much cocaine is in your system. You don't need to be a habitual user in order to feel the effects of cocaine. It was enough that she had it in her system and it caused her to die that day. Now, we don't know why Miss Street decided to take cocaine before practice. Maybe it was due to the stress she was under. Or maybe it was due to just having fun. We don't know why she did it and that's not the point today. The point is, Miss Street took the cocaine and never told anyone, especially not Coach Taylor. Now her actions in taking that cocaine and inactions in not alerting anyone about that ultimately led to her death. And those are the reasons why we're here today. If Miss Street had said something, anything, you heard the practice would have stopped and she would have stopped practicing that day. Now we can all wish that that had happened, but that is not what happened. This is not my client, Coach Taylor's fault. The only person who was negligent that day was Miss Street. As such, we ask your honor to take a look at the facts in this case and put any emotions aside. The plaintiff has failed to meet their burden and we have met ours. Cocaine killed Miss Street and not soccer. The plaintiff has not proven by a preponderance of the evidence that it was reasonable for Coach Taylor to have foreseen that Miss Street had taken drugs that day. Even her own best friend didn't know she was taking drugs. And because of that, we ask that you find the defendant in this case, Coach Taylor, not liable for the death of Rory Street. Thank you. Any rebuttal? Yes, Your Honor. May you I proceed? You can proceed when you're ready. Your Honor, it wasn't Rory's responsibility to ask for a break. It wasn't Rory's responsibility to ask for water. It wasn't Rory's responsibility to ask for shade. There was one adult on that field, one adult in charge of making sure that the health and the safety of the students was priority number one. That one adult was the defendant. That one adult failed to do her job. Now we've heard time and time again from defense, Your Honor, that this case is all about the drills that were run. And the drills have been run for decade after decade and the drills themselves were not problematic, but Your Honor, that misses the point. This case is all about the conditions under which those drills were ran. You run Burma Road under 80 degree weather, well, the students won't be sweating so much. The students won't be beating down from the sun. They won't be under that extreme heat exhaustion. But you run Burma Road under 105 degree weather, you better make sure that the students are going to be okay. That's exactly why you heard time and time again that there were instructions and guidelines given to the coaches because here in Waco, it's hot. There are times in which we have to consider the safety of the students and compare that to what exactly we are doing. So while it might have been okay for the defendant to run those drills under 85 degree weather, it wasn't okay on September 7th because the weather was 105 degrees. Students respond to the weather differently. It's up to the coach, the adults in the room to sit back and figure out what's going on to make sure that the safety of the students is always priority number one. And that's not what happened in today's case. What happened here is punishment, pressure. The coach wanted to win, create tough students. That's all the defendant cared about. She didn't care about safety. She didn't care about safety when she grabbed Rory by the back of her jersey, picked her up and made her run that drill time and time again after seeing that she was fatigued. 
And then the defense counsel always points to the cocaine, Your Honor. You have not heard any testimony today as to when that cocaine was ingested, how much cocaine was ingested, and the effects that that cocaine specifically could have on Rory. We didn't hear any of that testimony. You're going to have the opportunity to hear the, and to see the report from Dr. Reagan. Dr. Reagan makes it clear that the amount in Rory's system was nominal. Nominal. We don't know how much was in her system on the exact day, but we do know that it wasn't enough to cause those symptoms. And Your Honor, when you look at those two expert witness reports, I want you to, to pay close attention to what exactly it is those experts do. You'll see the defense wanted to create this picture of cocaine uses and of drug habits, but they hired a cardiologist. The defense wants you to believe that this cardiologist can talk to you about drug use. But when we heard that the defense alleges this cocaine, when we saw that toxicology report, Your Honor, we called a toxicologist, someone experienced in drug use, someone experienced to tell you how that nominal amount of drugs could impact Rory. What you heard is that that's not realistic. The amount of drugs in Rory's system from the toxicologist's perspective was not enough to cause those symptoms. But we did hear it was all about that heat exhaustion, Your Honor. Those conditions under which this defendant decided to run those drills, and that's what's important. There was one adult in the room. She didn't do her job. We're asking you to hold her responsible today. Thank you. All right, excellent job to both parties.